Hi, welcome to my channel. I want to answer five frequently asked questions about going lighter, going blonder. I've been doing hair for over 10 years and I've taken a ton of people lighter and blonder, all different shades, all different hair density and types. I'm going to be answering these frequently asked questions based on my personal experience. So question number one, will going blonde destroy my hair? This question is very much justified because the process is the most intense process that there is when it comes to coloring your hair. Essentially, you're removing bonds and breaking bonds and removing pigment out of the hair strand. Good news is you can do this in a healthy way if you have realistic expectations for the blonde that you want. If you're going for a totally bleached out Gwen Stefani blonde, then you're gonna have more damage compared to just taking your natural hair a few shades lighter in a very like sun-kissed look. The best way to ensure the integrity and health of your hair is to find a really good hairstylist that really cares about the integrity of your hair. Something to keep in mind, and this applies to all color, is lighter colors tend to lack shine and appear duller than dark hair. So if you're used to dark, shiny, looking hair and you go blonde, it's not necessarily because your hair is damaged that it looks duller. It's mostly because lighter color just doesn't have the same light reflection. Question number two, how long will it take to get my desired hair color? So this also goes back to what are your expectations? What's your inspiration photo? And where are you currently in the hair color levels? So the darker your hair is, and the blonder you wanna go, the more appointments and the longer it's going to take, you also have a higher risk of damaging your hair. If you have a naturally lighter color and you want to go even lighter, then you probably can get it done in one or two appointments. Question number three, how much maintenance will it be to maintain my blonde hair? If you have one of the more high demanding colors like an all over bleach and tone or if a half inch of outgrowth bugs you, then expect to be going to the salon anywhere from four to seven weeks. If you're doing more of a balayage blended into your natural color and your base is natural, then you can expect to have the color last from six to 12 weeks. Question number four, how do I know if blonde hair will look good on me? I recommend looking for inspiration online. Look for people that kind of have the same features as you. So same skin tone, same eye color, same natural hair color, if you can tell. That way you can see like how blonde kind of looks with your features. One thing to keep in mind now is that all photos online are filtered or edited. So don't think yours is going to come out exactly like that. I think if you take a picture and edit it, it can look like that, but you kind of have to see through all the filters now to get an idea of what it actually looks like in real life. If you've never been blonde before and you have natural hair or dark hair that could get damaged through the process, then I recommend trying a wig on. It's just something that you can do so that you can get a feel for how does this light blonde hair feel against my skin tone, against my eye color, and with the clothes I wear. I mean, all this, even the makeup you wear might have to change when you go blonde, so. Question number five, how much does it cost? This is going to depend on the area that you live in. I know that prices just vary for all products throughout the country and the world. I'm in California and I can tell you here, if you find a really great hairstylist, I would expect to pay between three to $500. For touch-ups, it would probably range between 250 and 300, depending on how often you're coming in. If you let it go too long, then you're sort of starting from scratch and you can expect to pay the initial price. But there's a lot of factors that go into this and the best thing to do is make a consultation with a really great hairstylist and just have them tell you what to expect financially, what will happen like if you miss an appointment, and just kind of find out how they structure their fees and their books. That way you know what you're getting into and you're not caught off guard or surprised by the ticket total at the end of your appointment. I hope these five questions and answers give you a little bit insight into the process of going blonde. I would love to hear your personal experience. 
if you have some stories to tell me. And don't forget to subscribe. I will see you next time.